everybody. It's Doug here, Doug Mystic Guy on Board Game Geek. Uh, coming back to you with another a short playthrough. This isn't going to be a long one, but uh, I did think it would be interesting. And after my, my lengthy session with Shadows of Brimstone, I took just a little bit of a break and decided to do a couple of shorter things. Um, so today we're going to look at something that I've, I've seen a bunch of videos on Arcadia Quest, but I haven't seen anybody do anything much on Beyond the Grave campaign book in the campaign, which is an expansion of the base game. And if you kickstarted it, you had the option to get that expansion. Um, it's pretty cool. It introduces some new mechanics and it introduces Undead, which is always nice. And we're going to do a two-player game. I'm not going to spend any time explaining the rules to you. I will explain them as we play because the game rules are actually incredibly simple. So without further ado, let's look at the... We're going to do a two-player game, so we're going to look at the two teams that we have. we got the Falcon team and the Tiger team, and we're going to take a look at um, who the characters are on those right now. Okay, so our first team, the blue team, which is the Falcon team, consists of Victor... Uh, Maya and the King of Thieves. Now, Victor, that's, uh, he has a, his special ability: is that if he, if his attack kills its target, he may activate another attack card that turn. That's okay. I, I actually may shuffle around their items because I realize he needs two items. I'm probably going to give him the Pairing Dagger uh, instead of the King of Thieves. Um, but the reason I gave the King of Thieves the Pairing Dagger is because, well, he's not uh, the best. His defense is. Defense is a little low, actually. Well, it's in between. Victor's got the highest defense on this team. So I may do that before we start. But anyway, we also then have Maya. And Maya may exhaust each magic attack card twice. That's pretty cool. She is our wizard, so she's got both spells. And then the King of Thieves. And he gets to roll plus two attack dice if his target has any exploration tokens on him. So he's trying to steal them from him. And that is our blue team. Now for the orange team, we have the powerful... Egocentric Knight Diva. Now, she doesn't have any special abilities, per se. She's just got a high health and a high defense value, which will suit her well. Plus, I also gave her the Rusty Blade and the Parrying Blade, so she even has a better defense. And then for the Spellcaster, we have Morgan. Uh, he's got, it says for each equipped magic attack card, he gets a bonus of plus one to his defense and plus one health. So right now it's plus two and plus two. That makes him a three and three. That's pretty good. And he gets to cast his spells. And then last but not least, our roguish type is Wisp. And uh, while he's using the slingshot, he has the ability when moving, he does not trigger a guard reaction. And you'll see what the guard reaction does during gameplay. So let's take a look at the scenario. We're playing the first scenario right now, which is the Haunted Barracks. It's the easy one. It's the first of the, of the scenarios for this uh, campaign book. And in that, we have this map layout. Now you can see that there's quite a bit going on in the map. And you see these, these cards with the rip symbol on them. Those are something that comes from specifically for this campaign. I suppose you could use them in other campaigns, but you need to be using Undead. I'm sure there'll be more in the future. And the starting areas. Uh, our blue team will be starting right there, and our orange team will be starting right there. Uh, you can see there's some monsters on the board already. We've populated that. And their goal, we have two quests. And I'll actually show you the quest cards. They're going to be up on the screen. We have uh, investigate the quarters. That means we have to go to the enemy's. Um, th that quest means we have to go to the enemy's uh, area, starting area, and and uh, investigate it when there's no enemies on it. And then we also have the secure the weapons cache, which has two spinal tap items in there. There's only two, so the first two to get there will get them. And the you know you can only get one per per uh, player anyway. And then, of course, the two PvE or PvP quests of kill blue and kill orange. So it, the first one to kill, you know, gets bonuses, etc. And this is the story behind this encounter. It says, while zombies and skeletons can generally get along without weapons, they're so much more entertaining with an axe or a sword. Fortunately, the Arcadia... The Arcadian barracks was chock full of cast-off orc weapons and armor. The only problem was getting the zombies to follow. Uh, directions long enough for outfitting, but now, inexplicably, newly risen dead travel to the haunted barracks seemingly of their own accord. If, if the guilds are to have any chance at retaking Arcadia, they do well to halt the flow of weapons and corpses coming and going from this place. So that's the, the ability we have, and there is a title that we can get from here, which is um, from the Investigate the Quarters thing, which is Speaker of the Dead. Uh, 
so that's pretty cool. And um, uh, there's not much more to say. There's some uh, quest tokens on the board, etc. And our enemies that you'll you can now see on the screen. We have three basic enemies, and they're starting level one. But we have the axe flinger zombies. Uh, they have a uh, they do have a ranged attack. They can throw their their axes uh, in a movement of one. Uh, then you got the the skeletons. They're the toughest fighters. Now you have to do five points of damage to get an overkill on them, which would prevent them from reacting and attacking back. That's that's a lot. And then of course you have the last but not least slasher zombie, uh, which is just outfitted with a sword. They don't have much special except they can instantly uh, discard all wound tokens unless he is overkilled. So you, he's only got an overkill of two. But if you don't do it, then he's not taking any wounds. And so th that's their advantage. They're kind of tough that way. So, and also, the same thing goes for the flinger zombies, the axe flingers. You have to kill them outright. So, they don't have any hits. They just have an overkill rating, uh, as opposed to the skull bones who actually have some hit points. Okay, now, let's, uh, we've done that now. I think the best thing to do is just get started. Uh, the blue team is going to get to go first. So, let's go focus in on them and get them going. Here's the blue team. Now, I think, first off, we're going to activate, uh, well, I did actually change out the pairing dagger to give that to Victor because we want him to have um, the ability to activate two possible weapons in a turn. And uh, now he, we're going to activate, uh, actually, we might activate the King of Thieves first. He's got some ranged weapons, and that would help him. So we're going to activate him first. Now remember, in an activation, you get three actions, or three moves, and then an action. So for his first act, uh, move point, he's going to open the door to their area. For his second move point, he's going to move out to here. Now, he gets to secretly look at this card. And he, we can either do what's on it immediately, or he can just leave it there. He doesn't have to do anything with it. And it says, um, just a flesh wound. Select any two monsters and heal two wounds from each of them. So he's just going to leave that there, but that is something we can do later to inhibit our, um, our enemies. Now, we got a choice. He can attack these guys over here, which is probably what he's going to do. Um, and now remember, he doesn't trigger... A reaction so he's going to actually for his third movement going to step there now with archery you have complete line of sight as long as you are uh, able to see the enemy you can attack them with archery so he is going to do just that he's going to hit the skeleton with an archery attack the combat in this game is incredibly simple so you can see here that uh, we have his slingshot and now his slingshot does two uh, dice so what we're looking for are the either the archery symbol or the burst symbol. If it if there's a burst symbol, then you get to continue rolling dice. And also, I have the special blue dice for the guild. He's going to roll these and hopefully do some damage. Maybe even kill. Not likely, but maybe kill a skeleton. So what did he do? He did get a burst, so that equates to one hit. Let's see what else he can do there. Two hits. He keeps rolling. Three hits. Wow. He's, he's he might actually be able to pull this off. Four hits. So four total hits on the skeleton. Let's go. Let, now you're looking at the skeleton there. I'm going to get uh, some wound markers and place them next to him. That's that was a good attack for our our hero. He didn't quite kill it. He needed to get. Oh, he did kill it rather. They only have two, but he didn't quite get the uh, the um, overkill ability. But it doesn't really matter because they only have a move of one. Let me go show you what I'm talking about. So here you can see the king of thieves hiding out in this corner right here. Um, he uh, he th did a slingshot on the skeleton. Now, it does have a movement of one, so as a reaction, it can turn and move toward him, and that would be controlled by the other player. Uh, but it would get there, and then it would die. So he actually succeeded in killing the skeleton. By the way, I'm going to show you miniatures as we go, because I think they're fantastic. They're begging to be painted. I wish I had the time to do that. Now, that this this uh, skeleton, or skeleton, rather, goes on the number one spot of this track and when this track fills out the board will repopulate with monsters at the spawn points. So that was uh, the blue player's turn. Now the last thing we have to do for his turn is mark that the King of Thieves used his slingshot because once it's now he can't use that again until we rest our characters and then he would be able to use his weapon again. Just to show you this, the, now I put the blue space on it because he's on the blue team but this is the King of Thieves. Pretty cool huh? They're truly awesome looking. All right, that ends the turn actually for the the blue player. Now we're gonna I'm gonna do less rules explanation as we go, but uh, I just wanted to get you started. Thought I'd uh, talk about some rules a little bit.
Actually, it's not the King of Thieves who has that ability of, of moving through. It's the it's Wisp. So if the King of Thieves moves, he's going to be attacked by a, a axe flinging zombie, uh, which we don't want to have happen. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the orange player's turn. Okay, here is the or the is the orange player. Now we're going to do something similar, except we're going to use a different character. We're going to uh, the orange player flips open the door. That's his first point of movement. His second point of movement is to go out here. We're going to take a look at, by the way, this is Morgan that's moving. And there's Morgan's miniature right there. Pretty sweet. And we're going to take a look at the card that he is on right now that has this, this rip symbol. It says, uh, Minion on the Prowl. Activate a minion of any type performing its movement and or attacks against... Well, we're going to do that. So he is going to activate this card. That means it is out of the game, discarded. And then we're going to go to, over to the other side of the board. Well, up here at the top of the board, you remember the King of Thieves was standing next to this axe-flinging zombie. So it spins around and hurls an axe at, the, uh, at, at our King of Thieves. So let's go roll for that and see how that goes. You can see that the axe-flinging zombie has an attack of two, so we're going to roll two attack dice for it. And the same principle the rules apply for them as the... Uh, oh, you know, one thing I did forget to do, so I want to remind myself before I do that, is when uh, the King of Thieves killed uh, the zombie, he did get a gold as, uh, as a reward. You can see that on the card. So the blue player has a gold piece right now, the first one in the game. And we're going to roll this. Okay. Uh, well, so it got w one hit. It, it uses the archery on it. And that'll do one wound to our King of Thieves, unless he can defend. The King of Thieves has a defense of two. And he failed, so he's going to take one wound from the zombie. So what does that do? We place one of these. Now these, these wound tokens, I'm going to tell you, do not come with the non-Kickstarter base game. The wound tokens are just cardboard uh, chits. They're real thick and nice, but they're, they're just chits. These, these cool little wound tokens don't come with the game. So anyway, that the King of Thieves now has a single wound on him. And now when we rest, we get to heal that too. But for now... Uh, he has one wound out of four, so if he gets to four, he'll die. He'll die. Now that doesn't mean they're out of the game. You'll see how that works as well. Now let's go back to Morgan because that was only the first thing that he did. That was his second action. Um, so uh, let's. He's got one more point of movement, and then he he also gets an action. Well, he not that he wants to make the same mistake that the King of Thieves does, just did, but uh, he does want to back up because if he hits these guys, he doesn't want to have them be able to retaliate. So for his Last point, remember, his first point was to open this move. Actually, I believe that he can't do that. He, I think activating that is a, a point. So let me just check that real quick. Yes, yeah, so revealing the tombstone card was his last point of movement. It, he was here, he opened the door, that was one. He moved out, that was two. And revealing that card was three. So now he's going to make an attack. And I believe that we're going to use his um, Nova Bolt spell. Let me show you that. That's Nova Bolt right there. It has a, an attack of two. And if this, if we roll any bursts, you may target an additional enemy close to the target. That's pretty cool. And there's two right there in the same space. We're going to target, I believe. Let's try and kill this zombie here. We're going to target him first. They're not. They're tougher than the Skelebone. Um, well, actually, they have the ability to come back. So remember, we have to do two points of damage to it to kill it. Otherwise, it heals. But we're going to give it a go. Now remember that Morgan's Nova Bolt uh, does two dice, and uh, he f missed completely. So that was his attack, and it zinged on by. Now, we still have to do what's called a payback reaction. Since he missed the zombie, the zombie actually is going to get to attack back. Now, typically, the other player would get to control the zombie, but since it's just me, we're going to have the zombie step up and do his slash attack. So it will go here as a, a payback reaction, because even though he missed the attack, he still made the attack, and the monster noticed it. So let's go to the dice bowl and roll for the monster now. As you can see, the Slasher Zombie has two dice, so we're going to roll two dice for him. Now, Now Morgan does have a pretty good defense right now because of all of his spell capability. He's got a three, but let's roll. Ooh, uh, that's not good. That's a one hit right there, so we're going to have to roll again because that is a burst. Uh, two hits, that's another burst. And three, so a total of three hits on Morgan. Now, there, there's uh, bad news in this. Morgan has exactly three hits. He has one plus one for each of his spells. So, now he gets to roll his defensive ability. If he, if he fails to defend, he will be killed. So here we have the defensive dice. He's got to roll at least one shield or burst to survive this. Let's hope he does. Oh my gosh, he did not. So, so Morgan was immediately killed, and he comes off the board. 
And uh, what happens then, he gets what's called a uh, death curse token. And when he, because uh, he can come back, but when he comes, when at the end of the, the session, he's going to draw a number of death curse cards uh, equal to the number of tokens that he has. Uh, one more thing that happens is the other player gets a gold coin, or actually it would be every other player. So if there were three or four players, then every other player would get a gold coin for the demise of the of the player of the, that team, of the, the other team. However, that doesn't equate to the Kill Orange um, quest that's available. That has to be done by one of the players from the other team. This was done by a monster. So that is going to end the Orange player's turn. And now we're going to get on, uh, we're going to do one more round of turns. We're going to go to the Blue player and then back to the Orange player and then we'll, we'll stop there. That was a bit of bad luck on the part of the uh, the orange team, but uh, the blue players don't want to suffer the same fate. So now we're going to activate Victor here. Now Victor has a, a sickle and a parrying blade, so he's going to go one to here, two to here, and he's going to attack that zombie. Hopefully he'll fare, fare better than poor old Morgan did. He is going to use his sickle, which is going to give him two uh, attack dice. Okay, so here's his two dice. We're going to roll these and see if he gets uh, some hits. He got one, but that is not enough to kill the zombie. And you know what happens with the, and you don't kill the zombie. It heals up immediately, so I'm not going to bother to put any wound tokens on it. And it is going to get its attack reaction back. Since Morgan is adjacent to the, uh, the zombie here, uh, we're going to get to attack back with uh, him. And, and basically, he's going to attack Victor back. Again, with two dice, that's what the zombie has for an attack value. A bad turn of luck for all of our heroes, but let's see what happens. So the, the, the uh, zombie got one hit on him, and now Victor gets to roll some defense dice. So he's got, again, how many dice does he have? He has three defense dice, so he's in better shape than Morgan. And he succeeded in rolling one, so he defended against the attack of the zombie and took no damage, but he also failed to kill the zombie. Well, that was it for the blue player's turn. Now we're going to go back around to the orange player, and we're going to get on with D.Va. Now, D.Va was hoping, what I, my original plan was for her to come around and kill this one and take this objective token, but she's just going to step out and attack that, uh, that um, zombie that's right there. Now, she does have the rusty blade, which is going to give her three dice to attack with. So here's one, her main die, and then two other dice that she can attack with. Now, um... I'm just using the orange dice because we got them at the game uh, in the Kickstarter and it represents that guild's color. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, also, I, I just want to point out that uh, she, even though she only moved one movement, she's not going to get to attack and then continue to move. So once she makes this attack roll, that will be the end of her movement. So uh, she got one hit, not killing the zombie. Wow. And let me see, does she doesn't have any re-rolls or anything? Nope. But the zombie does get to attack her back. And these zombies are, are surviving us here. And it got two hits on her. So, let's see. She has got uh, four defense dice. Plus one for the parrying dagger. If you, if you haven't seen the parrying dagger before, this is it. You see that it's got the extra. Even if you use it to attack, it's got the extra defense die here. Wow, she blocked one. So she is going to take one wound. So she takes, she used her rusty blade in her attack, and she does take a wound for uh, uh, fighting the um, the zombie and losing. She got, took a wound. Oh, and by, by the way, while we're here, I want to make sure we put this token on, on Victor's sickle, because he did use that in his attack. Okay, well, a uh, rather uneventful second turn, just lots of swinging and not a lot of, act, not a lot of uh, winning. <laughs> so the zombies uh, and the skeletons kind of won the day there, killed a character already. Um, now, once the orange team takes a rest action, they rest their whole team, that means they take no movements, they'll get to bring Morgan back into play and D.Va will get to remove her wound, plus the weapons that have been used will become unexhausted. So, um, guys, we'll see you next time. I, I hope you, you, you like this little playthrough. It's not going to be a long one. Um, we'll probably do about four or five turns. It, it, I don't think that... Uh, I don't even know if I want to play the whole game for you. If it goes fast enough, I guess I will. It's a very quickly paced game. But uh, I just want to give you a feel for the expansion and also just to give you a feel for, for Arcadia Quest if you haven't played it before. It is a really fun game when you've got four people around the table with their teams. It goes very fast and has a lot of action in it, so it's great. Um, and it's simple. It's, I can, you can teach it in ten minutes or less. It's pretty cool. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.